Dwight Davison's mother named him after former President Dwight D. Eisenhower, and his father Joe wanted him to go into hockey, not boxing, hoping he could become the next Maurice, the Rocket Richard. He'd tell me about Richard's cold, dark eyes, Davison said, his flashy style, his fiery temper, and his record-setting feats. But instead of hockey, Davison earned all-state recognition in swimming, track, and wrestling at Southeastern High School until he was yanked off the streets at the age of 16 by a Mr. Patterson who sent him to the McKinney Gym on Detroit's southeast side. Right away, he was put in with an accomplished amateur named Don Weaver, who took advantage of Dwight's inexperience. The day after I fought Weaver, Davison said, I went to the school library and got a couple of books on the fundamentals of boxing. I read up on style and technique. I learned how to condition myself, and a month went by before I got another chance to fight Weaver. I accomplished a goal. I had worked hard to accomplish it. Davison then found a new boxing home at the Brewster Gym in Detroit, where Joe Lewis and Sugar Ray Robinson once trained. He would find coaches in Festus Trice, Dave Collins, and Luther Burgess. After graduating high school, he juggled boxing with college studies. He enrolled at Wayne State University in Detroit, where he majored in physical therapy. Davison became interested in this subject after his uncle Alvin had suffered paralyzing injuries in a car accident in 1974. Alvin was a doctoral student at Michigan State before the accident happened, Davison said. I used to visit the hospital a lot. The doctors that were treating my uncle told him that he had to have an operation if he was ever to walk again. After the operation, they told him he would never walk again. He is now impaired on the entire left side of his body for the rest of his life. After losing in the 1976 Olympic trials, Davison turned professional in June of 1977. He knocked out future contender Murray Sutherland in four rounds a year later, and by November of 1979, he stepped up to face longtime middleweight contender Willie the Worm Monroe. Davison hurt Monroe early and outworked the veteran to earn a 10-round decision. After a stoppage win over former Olympic medalist Sugar Ray Seals, Davison entered the world rankings. Reporters and fans noted that he had one of the best right crosses in the sport. Dwight is a terrific puncher, former heavyweight contender Johnny Summerlin said. He's not that exciting, but the end result almost always is the same. Davison by knockout. But Davison had his critics. Chief among them was Emmanuel Stewart from the rival Cronk Gym. I never knew a good fighter who placed so much stock in not getting hit, Stewart said. I don't think he'll go anywhere because he won't take a punch. Nonetheless, Davison ran his record to 26-0, and many saw him as a future middleweight champion. His reputation grabbed the attention of the networks as he made his television debut against Philadelphia's tough Curtis Parker. Tonight you're facing your toughest test in the hard-punching Curtis Parker from Philadelphia. You are 26-0, and 0, and 20 of those have been knockouts, a startling 77%. Are you going to go out for an early knockout? Well, I'm going to go out in the early rounds and um, see if Curtis Parker is, is, is alert, ready, and, and test him in the first round. And if he seems like he's ready to uh, go the distance, then I just try to work and work until I can land a big punch. And if I don't land a big punch, I'll just be satisfied with the decision. Good. Sitting here with you, I noticed that your hand has been badly burned at one time. Does that affect your punching? Obviously, it does it with a 77% record, but how'd you overcome that? That's quite a burn. Yeah, I got that burn right around my third or fourth professional fight. I had about a three-month layoff, but it hasn't really affected me. Uh, any part of my career. Well, Dwight, we look for a sensational fight tonight. You're both heavy punchers. May the best man win. Thank you. All right. Good combination by Davison. That's our Luma lens peering in from outside. It takes you right in with the boxers and the third man in the ring. Oh, he had a great group of fans. Davison with a good right hand, and he misses with a wild left hook. He's a Detroit product, a la Davison. And Joey Giardello from Philadelphia. Parker with a good right hand. Philadelphia's had a lot of fine middleweights through the years, but never a middleweight champion. Parker thinks he'll be the first. They land a good, clean blow like they want to. Davison against the ropes halfway through round three. Very bright young man. He's 25. He's attending Wayne State. He's a junior there in physical therapy. Parker, isn't he? I said earlier that Davison had a habit of back of standing up at the at clinch straight up, and he's so vulnerable for either left hook or right hand. And you see he was delivered. Oh, by good Parker. body punches by Davison, but he missed with a right to the head. Davison scoring, but missing with a wild right. And Curtis a little bit of trouble. 
Curtis is trying to hang on here. Some of the middleweights in the past, Giardello, George Benton, Stanley Hayward, Benny Briscoe out of Philadelphia, Gypsy Joe Harris, Bobby Watts, Eugene Hart. Some say that he may be the best of the lot. He's got his hands full with Davison tonight. Davison fighting in quite a tradition himself. He's working out of the same famed gymnasium, the Brewster Gym in Detroit that spawned Joe Lewis and Sugar Ray Robinson, Lester Felton. He doesn't run at all. Now he's giving that angle, like I said earlier. He's doing the right thing, working the body. And here he has Parker Hurt. He Parker, sees him. Parker's completely confused, and I think he's a little dazed now. And Judge Chuck Baker scores 97-93 in favor of the winner by unanimous decision and still undefeated Dwight Davidson. That's an upset, Dwight Davidson. The tough winner. Dwight Davison, we have a few moments to go. Dwight, how did you find this tough kid? He was a lot tougher than I had anticipated. I thought I could keep him away on the jab, but I wasn't able to find him. I like to thank God for giving me the strength to go on. My trainers, Luther Fest and Mr. Collins, and all the people at Caesar College that made this possible. God bless all of you all. Thank you very much. It was a great fight, and you were a great fighter. The win against Parker saw him rise in the rankings. But a stunning loss came against Robbie Epps, who exposed some of Davison's weaknesses. Davison had showed vulnerability against fighters who utilized movement, and this became apparent against Epps, who outscored Davison and took an upset 10-round decision. In June of 1981, promoter Don King had aced Davison's trainer and manager, Luther Burgess, out of his position, installing his son, Carl King, as the new manager. This move left Burgess in tears, according to Emmanuel Stewart. Needing a big win to get him back atop the rankings, Davison came into a televised bout against the highly regarded Wolford Scipion, looking like a different fighter than he was four months earlier. And a good jab there by Davison. Keep in mind that despite his awkwardness, Davison is a very strong fighter and he has a good straight ride and an uppercut. And you can't underestimate his strength. He's looking very good in this first round. I thought that Scipion had put more pressure on him, but he's not. The win over Scipion brought Davison back into the title picture. Promoter Don King stated that he wanted to place Davison 
in with Marvelous Marvin Hagler to challenge for his middleweight crown should he get past Tony Simpson. But Davison was passive throughout the contest, never unleashing his big right hand against the aggressive Simpson. Davison lost a 12-round decision and a shot at Hagler. The loss seemed to end Davison's relevance in the sport. He took 10 months off before returning only to make sporadic appearances. His fighting style still exasperated local reporters who wanted to get behind him. He has a peculiar peekaboo stance, George Puskas wrote. He hides behind his gloves and leans back, out of reach. Then he might back away, step aside, grab and hold, or push and shove, anything to prevent another man from pounding on him. But outside the ring, there were more serious accusations. In February of 1985, a 24-year-old woman alleged that Davison forced her into his car as she was walking home and sexually assaulted her by gunpoint. The case was dismissed when the woman failed to appear in court. Another year of inactivity followed before Davison returned to face the unheralded Charlie Boston and about televised by ESPN. Dave referred to, we're into round one, Boston is a left-hander as you see. Davison, 30 years old, and get this, has not fought since February 16th against Erwin Hines, won on a knockout of last year, has had almost a year layoff, and yet is still rated fourth in both the WBA and WBC. I don't know what that says about the middleweight division. I mean, he is a, he's a good fighter, but uh, when you don't fight for a year and you keep your ranking, that's astonishing. It's a little bit too common, too, in the world organization. That is true. Well, I guess that's a debate for another time, huh? <laughs> Charlie Boston, a 24-year-old from Trenton, New Jersey, comes in with that 10-1 and record. His fight plan is simple. He wants to get inside if he can and get uh, uh, away from that long reach of Davison. He wants to do as he puts three now, four consecutive jabs out there, and Boston answering nicely. That's what he wants to do, come in behind. Body work by Boston. He doesn't pay the price for it. Davidson trying to counter, but good jab by Boston. Charlie Boston perhaps taking advantage of some ring rust by Davidson. Turns righty and lands a big overhand right, does Boston. Good quickness there to make that adjustment. Other rights. Charlie Boston, 24-year-old with that 10 and 1 record, certainly considered an underdog here to Davidson. But he has come out in the first round like he would like to cause an upset. Getting a highly ranked fighter. And that's what his handler said. If he comes back to the Frazee fight, it will be a good one for him. So far, he's done well here in the first couple of rounds. Davidson with the upstart. Good uppercut by Dwight Davidson. That one may have rocked Charlie Boston a bit. Davidson has good power. He's got 28 KOs in his 37 wins. Let's see if that right uppercut turned this fight around. We'll be back for round three action. Stay with us. He did a meal, and that's when it all started. <laughs> See, you shouldn't eat, and that's... <laughs> they say don't drink the water, don't eat the food. Halfway through the third round, and Dwight Davison landing a good right hand. Somebody's mouthpiece is on the, the mat. I think it is Boston. And Charlie Boston now getting a little wild and paying the price. And boy, Dwight Davison is nailing him underneath. Good right by Davison. Well, here's the power that has made him a contender. Well, very crafty, too. He waited for the opportunity. Did not force it. Waited till Boston came in. Now he seems to have Boston frustrated. Another big right. And the uppercut continues to be a weapon for Dwight Davison. So after kind of a lackluster start, not too surprising considering he hasn't fought for almost a year, Dwight Davison is coming on. He had, a, he's had his moments where he's hurt Boston, but... Uh, hey, hey, Rick. Again, he has not been really following up. And if there's been a criticism of Davison all through his career, it's been that he is not an exciting fighter, not very marketable, and they have something to do with him not getting a title shot. Boston with a right hook to the head of Davison. He smiles. Now Boston going after Davison in the final moments of round four. This one is scheduled for eight. Charlie Boston uh, would like a rally to see if he could edge ahead in this fight. We'll return for the fifth round right after this. Now Davidson putting punches together as Boston fading back. Very patient, Davidson. And Dwight Davidson continues the assault. Patience is his, his hallmark, although as we said, sometimes uh, 
people are not too happy with those patients. Half a minute left to go in the fifth round. Boston with that overhand right from the southpaw stance. We haven't seen him turn back to fight as a righty, which he did earlier. So they wind down here in the fifth round. Davison in the green, a 30-year-old from Detroit. There he goes! Overhand right by Charlie Boston. That is a shock. Dwight Davison falls against the ropes again. He's up at six. Wow, a lightning bolt. Charlie Boston comes edging across the ring. Look at him. He's looking for the one shot. Left hand hurts Davison. The chance of a career right here for Boston. Indeed, and Dwight Davison sees his title hope perhaps going up in flames. Can Boston put him away? Lots of time left to go in this round. A surprise, Charlie Boston has nailed White Davidson. Has him hurt badly, and boy, I think he's got to throw some punches, Dave. Boston has, as you said, the opportunity of his career right here. He's got to make the most of it. It seems like he's let Davidson off, unless he can land another big punch. But that initial flurry, is gone. That chance is over right now. We'll have to start another one. Why would Charlie Boston be backpedaling at this moment? No matter how tired he might be or arm weary, this is it right here. This is his moment. He's not throwing any punches. Unbelievable. It all, it all comes down to your experience in finishing a fighter. Yeah, but he's not even, now he's throwing punches. He wasn't even throwing any punches before. Well, Charlie continues to land. There's a left hand. Dwight Davison, though, a KG veteran staying in there and he now looks like he's weathered the storm a little bit we've got boston going backwards right hand boston again nails him he's got davidson i think a little hurt again straight left sends davidson backwards and boston stops punching wow bizarre just bizarre he saw the smile and he retreated and you know the smile is a sign that you are hurt well dwight davidson we mentioned he's been in with everybody He's a veteran at 30, and he is calling upon every single trick he knows here in this sixth round to survive it. Charlie Boston, if he doesn't win this fight, will look back on this sixth round, and he will be pained by it. The middleweight extravaganza. The left hand by Boston nails Davison, though he was leaning backwards. But Charlie Boston is doing the most of the punching in this round. And he did that left hand behind the right. It got him the distance he needed. Davison answers to the body. And it will be interesting, too, to see how the judges see it. The headshots are much more visible. Uppercut. Davison's going to the body. Uppercut on the inside by Davison. That was a weapon he used well early, but hasn't been able to get in as much lately in this fight. We're in the seventh round. Dwight Davison in the green, Charlie Boston in the white. Biggest moment in the fight, perhaps, in the last round, the sixth, when Boston had Davison down. But other than that, Davison has had some effective moments. Good right hands by Davison lately. A cross and then an uppercut. Boston answers with the left hand. And Charlie Boston, here in the seventh, has again acquitted himself well and has had a... Perhaps an edge in punches strong. Tony Perez gets the two apart. Straight right by Davison. It shows he's still dangerous in that. Back for round eight, middleweights. Charlie Boston in the white, Dwight Davison in the green, and boy, oh boy, this one could be a close one. Dave, how about on your scorecard? Well, how close is close? To me, you can't get any more. Okay, three, three, and one, you've got it even. Charlie Boston knows that this one is close, and he is coming out wailing, as is Davison. Dwight Davison. Charlie Boston has been eight twice before. Last time out was when he lost to Victor Claudio. That on one week's notice. This time he said he's gotten much better sparring, and he's in better shape, and that's been evident. 
One thing for sure, if this goes to a decision, you're going to see somebody with a broken heart. Yeah. yeah well, it, 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 it likely will be a split decision, I would think, or at least a majority decision. Because if Boston loses, he had the knockdown. And if Davison loses, he's coming back and his rating is at stake. And the uppercut by Davison, a punch he really found again in about the sixth or seventh round. Straight right by Davidson. So the veteran, Dwight Davidson, shows you why he has kept his top ten ranking. Davidson lost the fight, the first of three consecutive decision losses. Now released from Don King's contract, Davidson tried to resurrect his career by joining Emmanuel Stewart's Kronk Gym. His big problem has always been his reluctance to punch, Stewart said. If he'll punch, he could be a terror. Davison engaged in sparring wars with former light heavyweight champion Dennis Andres in the gym, but inside the ring, his performances remained hot and cold. If he loses, Stewart said, he's out of the business. Davison's career then reached a dead end after a loss to Kevin Watts in October of 1989. He retired, tried to come back in 1991, only to retire again a year later. He tried another comeback four and a half years later, only to lose one fight and retire again. Davison then went into business for himself, doing home repair and running a tree removal service. He passed away on February of 2020, a month shy of his 65th birthday.